Fashion Dolls, and we are back with our second show of the day. Our next special guest is also an actor, and he has such a unique style of acting. Michael Lloyd, ladies and gentlemen, will be joining me. So let me share this live. Let everyone know that I'm on so that we can dive into this second interview. The first one with James Joffrey on is up, so make sure you guys go and check out his acting class, Joffrey's acting class. If you want more information, definitely go and check out that first interview. It is up. So let me go ahead and share this with Michael so that we can get him in here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. There we go. TGIF, everyone. I hope you guys all are doing awesome and amazing. I'm trying to get my stand to work. Here we go. While we're waiting on everyone to come in, make sure you guys go and subscribe to Style by Stevie Daytime on YouTube. It is absolutely amazing. And you guys can check out some of the most previous episodes as well as some of my past episodes. You guys, we're almost at that 360 mark. Give me a second. I'm trying to. There we are trying to fix my phone stand there we go all right so let me add my very special guest my second special guest for the day michael lloyd ladies and gentlemen hello hello hey stevie how you doing i'm doing wonderful welcome to the dollhouse Oh, thank you for having me. A pleasure to have you here. So before we dive into this interview, 2022, if you could sum up your 2022 in one word, what would that be? Chaotic. It, that definitely has. Um, I just asked my previous guest the same question. I said, um, he said, um, Something of the extent of unpredictable. Someone in the audience said unpredictable because there's been so much that has been happening throughout this year. So much and unexpected from 2020 to 2021 to now 2022. It's just been crazy. So It has certainly been one wild ride. It is definitely not one that I would want to go to at Six Flags. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's dive right into it. How did the world get introduced to Michael Lloyd? Because I reviewed some of your work. You're an amazing actor. And tell us how you got started in the business in the acting world. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I started acting in high school. My freshman year, I did a play. Uh, we did a school rendition of The Little Rascals. And I played the part of Alfalfa. And uh, that was introduced into theater and uh, the acting arts. And I fell in love with it immediately. However, I never saw it as a stable or logical career path. For my other passion was this country. And, you know, being as old as I was during September. 11th um it, it, oh. it kind of yeah. motivated me into the military and i joined the marine corps after i graduated high school and after after that i was medically retired so when that was no longer a career path for for me to choose i went back to arizona uh, uh took a desk job and after about a year, I, I couldn't take it anymore. So my mom, who had been living here in New Orleans, invited me to come here. And so I uh, got a job with a private security company that worked on it. And then I discovered New Orleans is considered to be Hollywood. Uh, that's how much filming is done here, is that it's like South Hollywood. So. Anthony Mackey, uh, a New Orleans native, is actually in New Orleans East, bringing more jobs to the entertainment industry, which I think is just fantastic. And so I first started 
my very first background role was on a Netflix production called Zoo. And uh, they brought in the same dire wolves that they used for Game of Thrones scene. Because if anyone that doesn't know what Zoo is, uh, basically animals take over the earth instead of like some apocalyptic scenario like zombies or anything, it's animals. So they brought in these wolves from, and that was my very first experience. And I and couldn't imagine doing anything else. And that was in 2018. And ever since then, I've been pursuing that. I've been on a variety of sets like NCIS New Orleans, Screen Queens, Into the Badlands, uh, LBJ, which is a movie by Rob Reiner starring Woody Harrelson. Uh, I, I was one of the ones on that production. And I think that was like the first time close on camera. And that was cool to see because, you know, I got like two minutes of, of like screen time there. I am DB, unfortunately. And uh, for Queen of the South, I'm responding to, to a background role. And next thing I know, I'm getting a call from the casting office saying they want to audition you. And I was like, oh, my God, no way. So I was thinking I'm going to turn into something for me big time. And I, I just, I went in, nailed the audition. Apparently I was the only one they auditioned, but I nailed it. And they were thinking about teasing about giving me, choosing not to do it. But anyways. Now, Queen of the South. I'm familiar with that show. That was an amazing show on USA. Um, Gersh Sheffield was also on that show. And he was a DEA agent on that show. And I interviewed him. Not too long ago, so I'm pretty sure you two might have came across each other and running on set of that show, Queen of the South, and I wish they would have bought it back because it was such a great show on USA. It's just like all of the great shows get taken off of television. Now, I'm going to go back for a minute here. September 11th, um, everybody knows two words, never forget. That right there will go down in history and not in a good way, in, in a good way. It affected a lot of people, a lot of families, and so much more. And we, we lost, um, also, it was the year we lost one of my favorite singers, Aliyah. She passed away um, and that year also as well, two, 2001. So it, it affected everybody. Now, you said you also have done some work, sir, for the city. Thank you for that, because my father and brother are both vets and uncles as well, too. They're all vets. So tell us, what was it like, like doing that transition from serving to now getting into acting? Uh, well, I really like how Adam Driver put it uh, because he's also a Marine vet and he did a TED talk recently that I watched and he talks about how it's really not much different. Um, you have your call times, you know, of where you need to be and what you need to be doing. Everybody has a job to do. Everybody's a cog in a wheel um, in, a, in a bigger machine. And you're all working for a greater purpose other than just yourself. Yeah. So for the military, you're working for the purpose of, you know, a lot of people say freedom, but really when you're over there, you're you're fighting for survival with your buddy. So ultimately, at the end of the day, that's really what your service turns into. Uh, everybody goes in with the moral intention of, of, you know, honor, duty, country kind of thing, uh, but for survival. But uh, that's still a greater purpose than yourself because you're trying to save other lives as well. And same thing with the entertainment industry. I will never say that it's the same. It's the same thing. I will never, ever say that. And I've heard of entertainers and celebrities saying, oh, it's like the military. It's not. There's a whole lot of nuances and differences yeah. to it. But one very common theme that I can't agree with is that purpose in mind, that everybody is working towards in a production. Absolutely. And Michael, I love the way you put it with that as well, because so many people think that getting into this business is, is not. It's, it's completely different from the military. And salute to all the troops out here that are serving, bring our boys home 100%, because we're living in time of uncertainty. And like it's not promised. So definitely shout out 
salute to all of the troops. So I had to ask that question as well, too. All right. So going into 2023, because we're now almost, well, we're in the last month. We're in the last month of December, and now we'll be going into 2023. What is something that you're looking forward to for the new year? Uh, well, I uh, coming to the end of this year, I've decided that I, I really wanted to start off next year real strong. So I do have some things in the works right now for a few personal projects. Um, I'm working with some local people, uh, friends here in New Orleans. Uh, we're working on some projects and trying to uh, create some stories to to this industry that you know needs a break. From. So we're trying to bring something special something spicy you know uh something new to the table here um and so we're hoping to start off strong with that i'm also currently working on my own independent production company a multimedia production company because i love digital art so if i you know can what i would like to do is be able to make photography and filmmaking my full-time job uh, you know, even helping other actors. I know everybody is uh, is a doggy dog world out here and everything like that, but it doesn't really have to be that way in my opinion. I think that I can still do what I want to do and achieve what I want to achieve while helping others. Because to be honest with you, I can still help like another actor because they they may not be qualified for the same role that I'm qualified for, vice versa. You know, so it's not like they're really my competition. That is myself and how I can be better than I was yesterday. That's the only competition that I have in my life. So I like to try and keep it friendly. But anyways, I would like to help other actors build their using my skill set and my education from the Los Angeles Film School to help others progress in their career and uh, uplift them as well. Also, my previous guest, Jockey, he has his acting class. So would you consider doing acting coaching and acting classes as well also? Would, but unfortunately, I do not believe that I have the criteria necessary to confidently be able to say that I am a good teacher. I know good methods. I can point people in the right direction. I took your class, on, and this is what I would recommend is a uh, Dustin Hawking Masterclass. Uh, it's like one time and it's yours forever. And that was totally eye-opening to me uh, in the acting world. And of course they have other things on there as well for singing and producing. But you know, if you're looking for something like good acting, good tips, good helpful information, Dust Dustin Hoffman's acting masterclass is what I would recommend to, to any actor. I, I'm still myself and I could, you know, share what I know, but I don't think it would ever be more than what the average actor knows already. Now, one thing I could commend you for, because I love what you just said, the acting business is a dog eat dog world. It's like every actor's trying to be on top of try, the ones that are up and coming. You have some that are trying to be on top. But I love what you said, and that is basically help the ones that are coming up because there's so many people out here that are wanting to get into the acting business and not realizing what it takes to be an actor. There's so many classes, like you've mentioned, two of the greats, which I love, Dustin Hoffman and Woody Harlinson, and I'm pretty sure they had to go through somebody as well too to get coached. So there's so many programs, so much information, and so much literature out here that can help you if you're looking to become an actor. Now, Back, I'm going back a little bit. Um, 2020, because we did not expect this pandemic to come at all. And I was just having a conversation with my mom the other day. And we were saying how we did not expect this to affect so many shutdowns. I've interviewed actors that have done Broadway and theater in real time. And the shutdowns have affected theater in real time. It affected so many actors and creators and producers. And just like, okay, what are we going to do next? where it came now in the rise of having to do self-taping, self-taping of taping the auditions and things. So what advice would you give to other mm -hmm. actors that are looking to make it in the business as well also? Practice, 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 practice. It's 
just like anything else you would do uh you know take football soccer baseball basketball any sport any anything that requires muscle memory and effort outside of just breathing is going to require practice uh, like for example uh i like to play guitar i've been playing guitar since i was 13 years old uh so that's 17 years and i i've completely self-talk and the only way that i got to the level that i'm at now is by practicing constantly daily so even if you're you you're waiting for the phone to ring like you're waiting for your agent to give you your four the next casting call whatever it may be in that wait time in that make the best that you can use of your time you know look up some of the greats and how they became great, you know, in the way that they do, like Leonardo DiCaprio, take a look at what he's done and how he got to where he is today. And also not to mention the amount of times he got rejected for an Oscar when he deserved it a thousand times over. Um, you know, let's also take a look at some of the classic methods like uh, the Stan Slavosky method, uh, method acting. It's method acting can be kind of, um, overused and you hear it a lot in the industry like Jared Leto is one that I was known for doing his method acting and it can be a pain in the ass and you can end up being a hassle to deal with on set so be careful with how you apply and use your, your uh, but practice like look up one act there's tons of them online or even just like stage and just rehearse with a friend um, or something you know tape yourself and do different looks you don't have to get like a fancy camera you can just do it with your phone tape yourself with your phone record yourself practicing these lines and stuff you know watch it like a quarterback after game day and, and say oh I miss it. I could do this better here and then uh, I, I'm not again I would also uh, you know reference back, back to the master classes you know see what master classes are available uh, online or in your area. Try to see if you can even get into theater, your local theater, even if it's not what you want to do, like if it's not or movies and it's and it's stage acting instead, I think that is going to procure more creativity out of you than just sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. Absolutely, just waiting. Take those opportunities and leave just do it. And there's so many things out here that can help you if you're looking to become an actor. There's books also as well. Some shout outs to Kevin J. Stone, who's also an actor. Um, he recommended a book on how to be an amazing actor. Kevin was from, but when I did my interview back with him, he recommended that book. There's so many books and knowledge out here for people if they want to get into directing or producing or act behind the scenes, whatever it may be. So, Michael. So aside the acting, um, you're also an amazing activist because I was browsing your Instagram and I said, wow, he speaks out and vocal, you're vocal on so many things. So I wanted to applaud you and give you your flowers for that because there's so much going on in the world. And I don't even have to get into the logistics of it, but you're very vocal and you make it fun. You know, it's not too heavy. Where we live in a time where everything is heavy, you make it fun but you also get the message across as well too. So I definitely wanted to thank you for that as well. Thank you. And I do my best to utilize the, whatever popularity that I may gain to bring attention yeah. to certain issues that I find important, even if it's not like important to other, for me, you know i can't speak on certain things you know like the whole roe v wade thing it's like yeah i have my opinions but it's not really my table to sit at you know uh, black lives matter yeah i have my opinions but it's not my table to sit at i'm going to bring attention to things that i know because the same thing with writing the only way you can write a good story is by talking about what you know. If you try to start talking about things you don't understand, you don't comprehend, it's going to come out like shit. So same thing. If you try to be an activist about things that you don't really know, that you don't fully understand, you know, bandwagoning, if you will, you're going to end up hurting that cause more than helping it. So I stick with like what I know. So I'm being a father, I'm, a, you know, the 
whole maps thing you know i know we're on instagram live so i gotta watch it but you know like you know the whole maps thing uh i could go on for days about how how messed up that is the balenciaga thing i can go on for days about how messed up that is um but also through my own traumas and experiences as well through uh sa and and s and sh both against myself and people people that I, i'm not going and and also, uh, bully other people on the internet if if I can help it. Hi, my idea or anything like that. I'm gonna be like, really, you really want to go there? Draw you. Um, you know. So and big things that I know is why it it seems I'm I'm intelligent. But I can promise you, I'm not the smartest man in the room. It because I don't talk about things that I don't know. I'll just say I don't. I don't have an opinion. Absolutely, and there's nothing wrong with that. We're just sitting back outside of the conversation and uh, just saying, okay, I'm going to observe what's going on. This is not my range. But the other things that you speak out for, like LGBT and so many others, I applaud you for that 100. percent because every, I believe that everybody deserves to have an equal right. Everybody deserves to have a voice. And you've mentioned bullying. That's something I don't tolerate. I, I stand up for it on my platform as well, too. And I believe that everybody, just just say a kind word. Because it's, life is so short and we've lost so many people this year. Like, Kirstie Alley just passed away. Mm -hmm. And that took me for a loop and a surprise. Mm -hmm. The whole world's 21 years old. So it's just like life is short. Tia, yeah. Tia, and talk to you, sit down and have a conversation and get a better understanding. That's what I would say to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so that yeah, was conversation good. definitely needs to be had. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Michael. No, 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 by all means. Yeah, I was saying that it that was heavy, but we were going to have some fun because the Christmas holidays is approaching, and you say your father also. So we're going to do some Christmas games here with our guest, Michael, and we did this with our previous guests, and I've been doing it throughout the week with all my guests. So I'm just curious to know, because Christmas will be here before you know it. We're going to do something called the Rapid Five Holiday Edition, and Michael has to tell me five things that he can't live without for the Christmas holidays. And then the next one is going to call is going to be called holiday this or that. You get to keep one item, and if you had to throw away or get rid of one item, which one would you get a get rid of, and which one would you keep? So we're going to start off with the rapid five holiday edition. So what are five things that Michael can't live without for the Christmas holidays? Uh, my family, mm. uh, nicotine, <laughs> caffeine, uh, cannabis. And uh, my my father's Italian sausage bread. Ooh, food. Okay, and it sa it sounds like it tastes good because I love to eat during holidays. I believe that it's not just about family, but I love the food. I love wrap unwrapping presents that people buy me and everything. So I'm a foodie also as well too. I'm not just a fashionista, but I'm a foodie. <laughs> okay, all right, fashion dolls. That is his rapid five. So we want to do something called this or that. I'm going to give you two choices. And if you could keep one item, which one would you keep and which one would you get rid of? And we kind of got into a little kerfuffle in the audience, if you may, on one of the choices that I gave. And you'll see which one that is. Okay. So we're okay. going to start off with broken tree lights or old Christmas card. Which one would you keep and which one would you get rid of? Broken Christmas lights or an old Christmas card? Yes. I guess I would keep the old Christmas card and get rid of the broken lights. I because I could always go buy more more lights. That card probably can't be replicated. Yes, and it's sentimental because someone who could have passed on and went on, yeah. you that and you frame it or whatever. Or I know I have a whole bag. I gotta find something like to put all my cards, birthday and Christmas cards. And I have an aunt in New York, and she would send me Christmas cards. You know, they're my team. So I would always keep those things. Those things are sentimental. Whereas the broken tree lights, you have some people that will keep the lights because it just 
like, well, this satellite's work on this end, and then you have some that are broken. I'm like, no, I, w- I, w- I don't want to waste it. I mean, like, uh, I would go and buy myself a new set of lights. That's how I would do it. All right. All right. So the next two cho- choices are unwanted novelty gifts or unwanted vacant supplies. And a novelty gift is like that one gift that someone gives you that you totally dread. It's like it could be the most ugly lamp that you know does not fit with the decor in your house. And and your great aunt sent it to you because she thinks it fits within the decor of your house. And it's just like, I'll take it. Thank you. And you're sitting there like the lamp is sitting there looking at me. It's so ugly. Oh, my God, I want to get rid of it. But which one would you keep and which one would you get rid of? I got to go with the lamp. I got to go with the lamp. And the only reason I got to go with the lamp, too, is because uh, of a Christmas story. Because I immediately thought of the the, the leg lamp. And and I had to, um, I just, I got to keep the novelty items. Like, I'm just, but I'm, I'm a nerd. So the novelty items. I don't bake. So, yeah, I can toss out the baking stuff. But Okay, okay. All right. Access ornaments, or would you keep a real Christmas tree? Because I know a lot of people are like, well, I prefer a fake one. Which one would you keep? Which one would you get rid of? Well, I have a fake tree. Um, My dad does the real tree thing because I don't know when he decided to start making that a tradition. (laughs) Apparently decided to do that after I move out. But, uh, you know, because growing up, we always had a fake tree. Um, I do have a fake tree. I don't put it up anymore, though, because every year I put it up, my cats decide to destroy it and tear it all down and ruin my work. So, yeah. And a, and a live tree wouldn't be much better because I just know that they're also going to, like, scratch the crap out of it, hide in the branches, break the branches, trying to sleep in them and stuff. And then, of course, I'm going to want to go to the bathroom on that thing instead of their litter box. I'm just... Uh, I can't. I can't. So, yeah, I, I got to go with the fake one, but it's going to end up staying in storage because I can never put it up. Oh, my goodness. And you just made me think about the movie Christmas Vacation where the cat went and it was the cord, the lights and everything. So, yeah, if you know, you know, yeah. not the great aunt. I'm telling you, yes. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. And ornaments, um, whereas real trees, you have to worry about sweeping up those pine needles. Those pine needles get everywhere right. and they're so messy. And then the tree wilts, and it's just like, okay, if I t- if this tree comes down, how will I be able to put it back up? Whereas a fake tree, all year long, you can put it back up. So right. that makes sense. Okay. Now, the last question that I think some of my audience members that were watching yesterday's interview and today's interview, the previous one, kind of got into a kerfuffle over in the comments. And this was, would you prefer to buy someone a present or just give them a gift card? I see why you got into a kerfuffle. Yes. Um, would I rather buy them a present or get them a gift card? I would. All right. There's so many nuances to this because it depends on like who we're talking about here, right? Because my brother, he just, his birthday uh, was just this last week. December 4th was his birthday. And I just sent him 50 bucks Apple Cash, you know? Because I'm here in New Orleans, he's in he's in Arizona. So it's like, could I have like bought something, ordered it off Amazon, and sent it to him? Yeah, absolutely. But I if I know my brother, and my brother's gonna want to spend that on like you know trading cards or you know video games or something like that. So digital currency is re- reasonable, is acceptable, it's, yeah. it's appropriate. You know, uh, the actual present would show you know that you know the person maybe um you know maybe a a little bit more intimate or a little bit more sentimental but this really is is like a gray area because and i definitely understand why why the comments would be in riot right now because it really does there's so many nuances there's just too many nuances for me to like pick one and, and and decide i mean for my daughters i i pick out I pick out their guests, you know, they give lists and it's like, I know what they like. So I do the best I can because I want them to have stuff to like, remember me by and stuff like that. If I give them a gift card, they'll remember buying it, but they'll never remember when or how or why, you know, but 
And maybe when they get older, that, that that might change. But, you know, if I see something that I know, like, I know without a shadow of a doubt this person would lose their freaking mind over, I'm getting it, you know? But if I don't see anything and it's like, I don't want to run the risk of, you know, right. getting something that they might not like, I'd rather just give them a gift card now to go to something that they would actually use. And I love what Jay Evans, shout out to Jay Evans and Kate Cook, my brothers. We did the Christmas music panel, which is up right now. Make sure you guys go and check that out. He says, I don't really know what they like. I'll buy a gift, if not a gift card, right? And some people, you know, kind of will throw hints out there like, okay, how can I read your mind of what you want for Christmas? Right. Well, you can kind of get little ideas on Pinterest. I know I do Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And you can go to someone's board and just go through, sort through, find out what are their likes. What do they like in each category on Pinterest? And that'll kind of give you an idea. Or if they say you're walking in the store, you go to the store or whatever, and they pick out something and say, I, don't, I might not want to get this today, but I want to get it. You surprise them with it. So I love seeing the reaction of when you get it for them. Whereas a gift card, is basically someone made this point too. If a person has everything, it's like buying them a gift card. It's like, okay, I got a gift card in. I know for me, I love perfumes. I love perfumes and I love beauty products. I love makeup. So if someone was to give me a gift card to alter, I wouldn't complain. But if they give me something from the heart, a present, a gift, like a, let's just say a notebook or a diary or something that they wanted me to cherish, I would say, okay, I'll take it. But either or, it, it, it's, it's got to be sentimental. It's got to come from the heart. So that's why some of the audience kind of got into a tussle over that one right there. Just like gift card. Some people are just like, thank you for a yeah. gift card. Yeah, some but, people are insulted by that. They're, like I said, some people feel a lack of effort or a lack of thought into it. But they're not really being considerate of the other person's end or empathetic to the other end of like, maybe they just didn't know what to get you or maybe like myself, my grandmother asked me, I haven't gotten your, she still asks me, I'm 30 years old. She still asks me for my Christmas. List. She's like, I haven't gotten your Christmas list. Yes, Michael. I'm all like, I'm 30 grandma. And no, you're <laughs> like, I'm all, <laughs> like, I don't have a Christmas list. I'm just trying to make it out there for Christmas. That's a, that's all I'm trying to do. So uh, just, get the girls whatever and, and we'll call it even you know um so but yeah the whole the whole there's so many nuances to the whole gift card you know gift debate uh that i really think it just depends as long as you know the person well enough to feel confident in giving them a gift if they are someone like me where it's like they kind of have everything that they already want and right. you know everything that they would want potentially like all my my christmas wish list is like thousands of dollars of like film gear so i can't like send that to you know my middle class parents that <laughs> that are also struggling like i am uh because yeah, yeah it's just no not happening but i mean I, I personally don't mind the gift cards i don't get offended by them at all you know i'd rather actually get the gift cards because it does take away the anxiety for me um of having to act surprised or grateful for something that's just like i'm i know i'm never going to use this and it's like and i hate feeling like disingenuous like that i don't like feeling inauthentic mm -hmm. like that it feels rude it feels disrespectful i don't like like they tell you not to lie but hell forbid you know i get a gift on christmas that's like yay 12 packs of underwear thank you like i'm supposed to be overjoyed for underwear you know, like not to say I'm not grateful. Thank you for clothing me. You know, I think that's the bare minimum, but you know. Coming. That's my mom. Hmm. Um, yes, and someone mentioned it in the comments. Um, I'll take a gift card any day over other uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> we have an acquired taste on how we like to decorate our homes. And again, it goes goes back to one of those family members, that great aunt, or somebody that's going to pick out something that they know does not fit in with the decor of your house. It's just like, what am I going to do with this? And it's going to sit there and collect dust. And they're just like, why do you never use what I've sent you last year for Christmas? Oh, I love it. So you kind of have to put on that fake, and it's just right. like, no, I don't, don't really want to hurt you. you know what, but yeah. You know what also is kind of like a slap in the face, though, 
is when you get grandparents that like come over for Christmas, right? Uh, and these are kind of like step grandparents, you know? And so the gifts that they give you are things like socks, underwear, toothbrush, toothpaste, mm -hmm. necessities. Like they give you those kinds of gifts. But then when it comes to like their direct children, it's like iPods, Xboxes, Playstations. I'm like, oh, I see. Noted. Okay. Right. Keep that same energy. All right, Grandma. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. And last but certainly not least now, a lot of people kind of got into this when they're just like, I'm in a relationship. I, I would rather go visit family than having them come to me. So, okay, which would you prefer for the Christmas holidays? Going to visit family or having family come visit you? Going to visit family um, for a myriad of reasons. Logistically, it's easier for me. Uh, you know, I'm single. I, I live alone. Uh, the only thing I got to worry about are my animals. You know, I can take my dog with me. My cats are pretty self-sufficient as long as I leave out a large, you know, bowl of food and their gravity water, um, their water fountain. And then I have a neighbor that can always pop in and check on them, make sure they're okay kind of thing. Um, so it's easier for me to travel than to have my mother, father, sister, her husband, her, my niece, nephew, my brother, his girlfriend, my grandmother, like 10 people to, to come to my tiny little 750 square foot shotgun. <laughs> like, have go visit them. And, and it's perfect family timing. And I yeah. know you guys seen, you made a joke about this yesterday. Um, you guys seen the movie Home Alone where all of them were stacked up in the house together, two to a bed, some on the floor, some on a chair. Like, some people have a very big family. And it's just like, okay, I need to make sure that I'm secure, that I'm set. So make sure that you guys are booking your hotel reservations. Do everything in advance. Do not wait till the last minute because I know this year, Thanksgiving was the worst and I've seen pictures of the airport and everything. But I know this year for the Christmas holidays, it's going to be ridiculous. The lines are going to be around the corner. So make sure that you go ahead and you book your stuff in advance. That's kind of what I was advising people to do on yesterday's show. Get your tickets and stuff in advance because the holidays will be here before you know it. Christmas will be here before you know it. And I know a lot of people are going to want to try to book flights to go back home to visit their family. Yeah. So make sure that you're doing this in advance. Do it in advance. Yep, absolutely. I'm driving, so I don't have to worry about the TSA or anything. But and and that's that's amazing. That's cost efficient, and it saves money also as well too. So definitely, definitely, if you are a driver and you're driving home, that that would be the best way to do it. Because I know when you get to the airport or whatever, and I just hate that mm -hmm. where it's just like, okay, you know, the flight has been delayed. Or the flight got canceled and you're having to literally stay in the airport. And it's just like, no, I want to go home and visit my family. I didn't have until just for this. Yo, there was this one time, it was during New Orleans Jazz Fest. And I forgot it, it was Jazz Fest. And apparently everybody was mass exodusing New Orleans after Jazz Fest ended. And it happened to coincide with the same time that I was coming back to Arizona to go see my daughters. So I ended up missing my flight. I had to do stay over for like two hours to catch the next one. But catch this. Um, you know who Marlon Webb is? Yes. Saw him walking around in the, in the airport while I was waiting for my flight with his entourage. I was like, that's so cool. This is so surreal. It was really dope. And see... You couldn't do it. You couldn't get where you needed to be, but you met, you've seen one of your stars that yeah. you were looking up to. It's amazing. You took advantage of that, and that is the blessing of these things. It's unfortunate that happens, but I know people are, will be up, you know, some of the family members are like, well, what happened to you? I got, you know, I got, my flight got delayed over time, you know, I couldn't make it. So my gift to you is I'm going to try to do something, at least try to do something and make an effort and come home, because yeah. that's what I know the family so definitely. All right, fashion dolls. We are now at the end of our amazing interview and conversation. Michael, your energy is just powerful and I feel it through the screen. So before we 
close out this interview, what are some nuggets that you will leave to other actors that are looking to get into this business? And especially for the Christmas holidays. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's really good. What nuggets of wisdom could I pass along to any, any future, potential future actors out there? Um, get used to rejection, get used to it now. Um, because I can tell you right now, if you are not used to it or if you're sensitive to it, it will destroy you if you're not, if, if you're not prepared to, to get that no. Um, so be ready for a lot of no's, a lot of no's. Um, but keep working for that yes. You know, um, it does come eventually. You know, even if it's in something small like a non-speaking role. Because, you know, that non-speaking role has already opened opened me up to, you know, doing things like this, where I've done a bunch of podcasts and radio shows now, and people are asking me about it. Um, you know, you get to meet really cool people uh, and stuff like that. So even if it's just like background acting for now, you know, just learn the process, learn to enjoy the process too, because another thing that's similar to the film industry, like the military, is hurry up and wait. And basically it's, you're rushing to get everything in position, but then you're waiting. You're waiting for the camera to set up. You're waiting for lighting to set up. You're waiting for makeup to finish their touches. You're waiting for FX yeah. to get into place, you know, uh, and get on your marks and everything like that. So make sure to, you know, get ready for that hurry up and wait game uh, and practice patience because, you know, the better that you can practice patience, the easier it will be for you to get through those long days on set and also be prepared for you know changes constant changes you know be able to be flexible uh be able to adapt and overcome uh which again is another similarity uh to the military which you know has helped me a lot is learning how to adapt and overcome and just roll with the punches because sometimes it's not gonna go your way on queen of the south i didn't get used for the first three days that i showed up on queen of the south and i worked 12-hour shifts in between those days so I was literally working 12 hours overnight, not going to bed, just rolling straight over into set, not being used for 10 hours that day to turn back around to go do another 12 hour shift. That's what it took for me to get to do that role. That's what it took, you know? So you gotta be prepared for like anything, man. Just mm -hmm. be prepared. You gotta have thick skin, you know, get used to rejection and practice patience. I guess those would be the best nuggets of wisdom that I could get. Because to me, those are kind of like the foundation because the rest you can build off of that and you can determine where you want to go with it. Absolutely. And to add on to what you said, one more thing before we go. Um, I was watching TED Talks and someone said something about the power, the man who was talking about the power of no. And he was trying to do something for, I think, a farm tech company or something. And he was trying to do a pitch to them and they said no. And he said, well, well, there's so many different ways to say it. You know, there could be no, not right now, not at this moment. Keep working harder. We see your progress. We see everything that you're going for. And it just could be a simple no. You have to determine. It's up to you to determine which one do you think it is. And for this one, it was actually a no, not right now. Come back and try to give us something a little bit different, you know. So there is power in no. You take that no and you turn it to yes. Yeah, my mom, I mean, my mom can attest to that. Lisa Lloyd, she's an entrepreneur and inventor. She's been on Shark Tank, the big idea with Donnie Deutsch, Dr. Phil, and a whole bunch of other stuff with her inventions. And she made her first million off of the French Twister. Uh, so, yeah, and and she got at least 100 no's before she got that yes. And she always abided and lived by the saying, no doesn't mean no, just not right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope you all took something from this Fashion Dolls. This was an amazing interview, both interviews. Special thanks to James and Michael, two amazing men, and I've had the pleasure of sitting with both of them today. So this has been a great, great conversation, Michael, and we definitely got to do this again in the future. Let everyone know where they can follow you at and check out your work. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to be getting rid of Facebook, but for now, you can look me up. Uh, Michael Lloyd is my name, L-L-O-Y-D. Uh, infamous Asmodeus is my Instagram handle for now. I am taking on a certain personification, if you will, 
in order to establish my platform. I am still building my brand, so bear with me. It is a work in progress. Uh, you can also follow me on TikTok as well, infamous Asmodeus. Uh, and let's see, TikTok, Instagram, oh, Twitter. I'm also on Twitter as well. Uh, same handle, infamous Asmodeus. And I think that's all of it. Yeah. All right, fashion dolls. Make sure you guys go and follow Michael. And shout outs to also James Joffrey on as well, too. Special thanks to both of these amazing men. Now, Monday is about the ladies. So me and my girls will be going live at 4 p.m. And it is the all women's panel. Shout outs to my girl Simone, Angela, Riquet, and Ro. We will be talking about so many things, women's issues, and much more. So make sure you guys tune in for the women's panel Monday and see all of my previous posts for the lineup of who's coming on the show next week. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I love you all, and make sure you guys are being safe out here. Christmas holidays, get your shopping done. Get everything you need to get done, because I know the stores are going to be packed like crazy, and the airports are going to be packed like crazy. So make sure you got your travel expenses, all of that in order, and prepared for Christmas, because I know a lot of people are going to be trying to get home. And my brother and his girlfriend should be coming out sometime this weekend. So super excited to see them. But I want you guys to do something amazing, do something positive, And remember, stay styled by Stevie. Take care, everyone.